Hi, I'm Sean League with Daystar Filters, and today we're going to be going over the new Daystar Fork. So it comes in a box just like this, and you can get this in the Chromosphere model or the Prominence model. The Prominence model is uh, 0 0.6 to 0 0.8, 0 0.9 uh, angstroms, and is designed for you to see prominences very well. But you'll still be able to see surface features even with the Prominence model. They just won't be as good as the Chromosphere model. And with the Chromosphere model, you'll be able to see some prominences, but they won't be as good as the prominence model. So it's not, uh, you know, one doesn't necessarily negate the other. It's just um, whatever your preference is. If you prefer prominences, you should get the prominence model. If you prefer more surface detail, then get the chromosphere model. And they both run the, the same price. So they come in a box just like this. Let's uh, go ahead and open this guy up. So inside, you'll have your directions, your uh, five-year warranty, and these are all the adapter plugs for whatever country you happen to live in, and your wall plug. It's an AC wall plug to USB mini adapter, and that's what the cork actually uses. So, and then the cork will come in a twist tube like this. Alright, and there's your cork, and this one happens to be a chromosphere model. It'll be indicated on the top of the eyepiece right here. And this isn't a true eyepiece, so you actually have to put an eyepiece on top to view through it. But on the bottom you'll see it has inch and a quarter, or two inch, so it'll fit either inch and a quarter or two inch um, focusers or uh, diagonals. And this, don't worry about putting this in a diagonal, this isn't long enough to actually hit the bottom, uh, hit the mirror. I've, I've tried it in several diagonals, and uh, there's plenty of clearance. So, as you can see, uh, there's well, maybe you can see <laughs> plenty of clearance even with the cap on. So. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to use this little Astrotech uh, 70. So I'll put a diagonal on the back of that. And then to use the cork, simply pull the cap off and place the cork in the two-inch diagonal like so. Tighten up the. If you have an inch and a quarter diagonal, it'll fit with the smaller barrel inside. Now the next thing I need to do is plug it in, okay. um, because the uh, cork actually requires heat, uh, a certain temperature, to be on the band to actually see hydrogen alpha. So it's all temperature re regulated. So it's a good idea to plug it in first because it'll take a few minutes to warm up. And when it's warmed up, this light here will start off yellow, but as it warms up, when it gets on band, and it's been on band for several minutes, it'll turn green. And that's when you know you're on band. Now this uh, knob here should be turned to the up position. Okay, I've went ahead and, uh, went ahead and plugged this uh, USB in. And so I'm gonna put that into the port now. And you'll see that the light turns yellow. So now while it's warming up, I'm going to go ahead and put my eyepiece on. And I've just got a 32mm uh, yeah, Teleview here, fossil. So the reason we like the uh, Teleview eyepieces is because they have uh, a lot of baffling and they have uh, the edge is dark and they're great for solar viewing. Yeah, a lot of eyepieces that work great at night don't work so well during the daytime. So, um, But these eyepieces just yeah, happen to be very good. Okay. All right, while we're waiting to, for this to turn green, this is a good time to you know, mount your telescope. You can put it on your mount, set up your tracking, or um, however you want to set your telescope up. Um, and you can actually plug the cork in before you put it in the telescope while, while you're setting up as well, So, you know, however you uh, prefer to do it. So now, once this turns green, you're ready to go. Just aim, aim it at the sun, and focus, and observe. Now this will work for any scope, below 80 millimeters, this is all you need to do, and you're ready to go. If you're above 80 millimeters, you'll need a UVIR filter, which I have one sitting right here, and that's a astronomic 2-inch UVIR filter, 
And the IR filter, we recommend it that you put it in front of the diagonal. So just thread this onto your diagonal here. And that keeps the diagonal and the cork from getting too hot. And inside the telescope, if you have a doublet like this is, you just have all the lenses up front, nothing in the light is not focused on anything in the telescope, so there's no problem with uh, overheating. Now, if you have a type of telescope like a head spell or a SCT or something like that, the internal workings will get very hot, and in that case, you will need uh, an ERF, an energy rejection filter, for the front of your telescope. So we'd recommend that for anything above 150 millimeters in a refractor and any kind of telescope that has more elements behind the front two elements, or front three elements if you have a triple. Now, the one thing I didn't talk about yet was this knob here. Okay? When you're starting off, you want to start with the knob pointed up, the little white uh, dash here pointed in the up direction. That is exactly 6562.8, so that is um, on band. You may find that you need to adjust the uh, wavelength, and you can do that by moving one tint to the right or one tint to the left, and each tint is 0.1 angstrom, either way. And the reason you would do that is for, for example, this rotation of the sun. You're going to get red shift on the side uh, going away from you and blue shift on the side coming towards you. The atmosphere um, can change the, uh, the wavelength slightly. Your, your focuser, if your focuser has a little bit of slop in it, which all focusers have some slop, but that will blue shift the image just a little bit. So what I recommend doing is leaving this pointed up when you start off, and if, you're, if the image isn't as good as you think it should be, or if you just want to experiment, play around, um, you know, just change it to one side or the other, and then wait a few minutes for it to turn green again. Okay, and if you see it's getting better in that direction, keep going that direction. If it gets worse, then go the other direction. So just find wh where is the sweet spot for your telescope. Okay, now you can see that the light has finally turned green. And you can watch when I change this tint. See, it will change back to yellow as it's warming up or cooling off. Now it'll warm up faster than it cools off because it doesn't have active cooling, but it does have active heating. So when you change the, uh, the tint like this, uh, just be, be patient. It'll be a, a minute or two before it um, will actually change the band. Okay. Now, next thing I want to talk about is power. Now, the cork comes with an AC adapter with the USB end on it, but you can use a, you know, a standard USB to a uh, USB mini, but you won't be able to use it on a computer because this uses 1.5 amps of power and um, at 5 volts. So what we've done is we've come out with a little power pack like this, this guy here, and this one will put out uh, 2 amps, okay. and this guy actually has 30 amp hours of power available inside, and it will last for several days uh, running one of these filters. And we, we also have a convenient solar panel on it, so you can, since you're going to be using the cork in full sunlight, why not use the sun to help charge your battery? So this will help keep the battery alive for a little bit longer. Okay. Now, on the on this battery, you'll see there's a 1 amp output and a 2 amp output. The cork needs to be put into the 2 amp output because it's a 1.5 amp draw. Okay? The, uh, if you put it into the 1 amp output or if you plug it into your computer, this light will simply turn red. It won't harm your computer, it just won't work, it just won't charge. So that's built into the cork to, to sense that there's too low of, a, of an amperage. Now, in the near future, we're going to be coming out with some accessories for this cork as well. We'll be coming out with a with a two-inch adapter. We've had a lot of requests for that uh, to put a two-inch eyepiece in there. And the cork has a magnification of 4.3x built into itself, so that you can use it with an F5 to F9 refractor. That that was the uh, purpose of the design, and we designed it specifically for those refractors. Uh, but if you have, say, an F15, something like that, you can still use the cork but it's going to be at a very high magnification, so it might be fairly dim unless you have more aperture. So what we're going to do to solve that is probably sometime in the next year, we're going to come out with a, a 2x model, so, but we haven't done that yet, so we're a little overwhelmed producing this at the moment, but uh, we'll get on that as soon as we can. And then uh, you know, for those SCT users out there uh, that use off-axis, um, 
the cork will not work on off axis, not very well anyway, um, because it, if you're at an angle, the hydrogen alpha will spread slightly, so you won't uh, get as good contrast uh, as you normally would for a straight through. So we're working on a fix for that too, um, so stay tuned for us for that. Okay. Okay, thank you. If you have any questions, uh, please email me at sean, S-E-A-N, at daystarfilters.com, and I'll be happy to answer them. And if uh, anybody wants to see uh, a video or you know, how to put something together, with any, any, anything in the Daystar line, uh, please send your requests in, and uh, I'll be happy to put together a video for you to help you out. Okay, um, that's it, and I hope you enjoy your filter. Have a good day.